Hey everyone, Super Robot back again, and today we're going to be looking at an exciting AI uh, semiconductor play in the OTC, very little debt, great revenue, upcoming annual report, and hopefully additional updates as well. That is PWDY. This is a really nice, clean setup, very safe, uh, no dilution, max share structure, uh, and in a market full of chaos right now with things like GVSI and IGPK shitting the bed, uh, it helps to have something where there's less that could go wrong. A lot less. So PWDY is a company that's not based on some pie-in-the-sky merger or speculation or dated catalyst. Instead, it's actually a fundamentally solid stock for these prices. Uh, so let's dive a little deeper into PWDY, why I feel that they're well positioned to capitalize on this coming year, especially with the AI boom and everything, uh, and why I think it's a good swing trade and, and where the, uh, or how it has low, low risk and solid reward, right, from, from around these prices. So let's take a look at PWDY, guys. Let's first look at the share structure, as always. And the share structure is one of the keys to why I really like this play. Uh, we have an authorized share of two billion, and we have an outstanding of one point nine billion shares, and then we have a held at DTC, which is our float, of just under a billion and uh, nine hundred twenty-four million shares, and are held at DTC float. Okay, so really nice share structure. Why? Because well, first of all, under a billion shares in the float, fantastic for you know low sub penny like that. Really, really nice for the for the price, and then we have a maxed authorized shares here, right? So there's really almost no room for them to dilute whatsoever, and there hasn't been dilution in months on this company. So it's a non-dilutive uh, stock at the moment, and, you know, we've played the max share structures before with, with good results because this always keeps traders uh, feeling good and feeling pretty safe about it, right, when the share structure is maxed out like this. Uh, and only 2 million market cap, so tiny, tiny MC, a lot of upside. So let's take a look at more of the company, why it's exciting. This is their uh, website, their homepage, and here's their About Us, and you can see they own two different companies. They own CM Technology, and they own Frame One. And the company we're really excited about here is CM Technology. So this is their main subsidiary. They acquired it earlier this year. Uh, they actually brought this ticker back to being publicly traded. Uh, I think it was in March of 2023. So they put a lot of work in into bringing this stock back from the dead and then bringing in a real company. So I, you know, I, I do expect there to be a good amount of updates in the future uh, because they've they've done all this work to get here. So let's look at CM Technology, Creative Motion Technology LLC, New England-based motor manufacturer founded in 2004, been in business for nearly two decades. Management is over 60 years of design and manufacturing expertise, especially in the design and custom building of industrial servo murder, motors, uh, both brush and brushless motor designs. Uh, what does this mean? Well, basically, as you'll see, they make the robotics, robotic arms, the motors for these robotics uh, that are on the manufacturing lines for semiconductors and also now AI chips. Uh, they make them, right? So... It's a very uh, necessary, not hype, but a very necessary part, a uh, very necessary component in the process of making these AI chips. And the demand for these uh, robotics motors are only going to increase as the demand for chips, especially the AI chips, increases as well. And the company talks about that in their press releases. So let's go look at some of their PRs here. Here's some of their news. You can see uh, if we go back to March 30, 2023, this is when it resumed trading out of the expert market. Management brought it back and put this really good company in, right? They've had a bunch of updates since then. Let's take a look at their August 16th letter to shareholders. So this is just from a, a few months ago. And it says, we wanted to thank all shareholders for their patience, yada, 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 right? They've been relisted. 
Uh, they merged the uh, CM. Okay, let's look at Frame One first. We have addressed current growth of Frame One by hiring additional staff, setting up web presence, expanding digital footprint through digital marketing. Okay, this is a company that makes uh, custom frames for like universities and guilds and writer, you know, writers uh, guilds stuff like that, right? So art, local artists, etc. Uh, it's it's a relatively successful business, but again, we're not too excited about Frame One. It's a solid business. It brings in revenues for them, but the exciting stuff is really in this CM technology. Okay, and you can see there was a temporary slowdown in second quarter uh, of this year due to supply chain issues, but the supply chain issues were fixed. With the ongoing emergence and growth of artificial intelligence, we are anticipating and preparing for an increase in demand for CM Tech's custom design motors. Currently, CM Tech does not supply the AI market, but supplies the motors to the semiconductor equipment manufacturers who produce and service the automated equipment that is responsible for making the silicon wafers used in the microprocessing chips. These microchips are used in AI, as well as smart TVs, cell phones, computers, and virtually every smart device produced today. CM Tech is now currently evaluating some local motor manufacturing companies as potential acquisition candidates, which will increase our market presence in the medical, robotic, and unmanned vehicle sectors. In addition to providing new market opportunities, it would also provide the company with additional experience in sales and technical support. CM Tech is also working to enter these markets on our own, but doing it via an acquisition would save us time and capital since the gestion period is six months plus to get new products introduced into these markets. So what's the takeaway from all that? The takeaway is, well, two key things, okay? The increased demand in AI chip development equals increased demand in these custom designed robotics motors that are necessary to produce these semiconductors. Okay, so there's an increase of demand in general for this product and there's going to continue to be because really where are electronics going? I mean, they're only getting more and more uh, pervasive into our lives, right? And the second big takeaway is they're working on additional robotics acquisitions, which is really, really exciting. And they specify not just the AI chips uh, in these acquisitions, but medical and unmanned vehicles. So that could be a really, really exciting acquisitions that we see in the near future as well. Keep in mind, this PR is back from August. So they've been working on these uh, initiatives for several months now, which means we might be really close to hearing more. And I do think we hear more about what the company has in store once we see uh, their annual report filed for this year, which is due this month. So it's due in March, or I think they might be able to extend to May or something like that. But basically the annual report is coming very soon. It's going to reflect, first of all, great revenues, uh, but it may also tell us more details about these acquisitions. We might get another PR from the company, etc. So there's a lot to look forward to in the future with this company. There's a lot of growth that's coming to them, right? Uh, so we're very early here in terms of that. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you is the balance sheet. So as you can see, they have not huge assets yet. I'm sure they're working on building that up. It's like $275,000 in assets, which is mostly just accounts receivable. All right, I, it doesn't seem to be like they're listing the CM Tech equipment on here quite yet, so that might get added later. Uh, but what I really want to highlight with these financials is the current liabilities, because we're so used to these penny stock companies uh, diluting on our heads and being, you know, knee deep in debt, uh, whereas PWDY is quite the opposite. So many of these we look at have millions and millions of dollars in debt. PWDY has almost nothing, almost no debt whatsoever. I mean, you can see their only significant debt is $238,000, and that's due to the CEO. That's, that's what the CEO put in, all right? So there's like no, there's no convertible note here from what I can see at all on current liabilities. So only 330,000 total current liabilities combined with a max share structure. You can feel really, really comfortable as a shareholder here that you're not going to get egregiously diluted on and that the share structure is going to remain, you know, pretty tight and pretty solid uh, because like I said, there's just, there's nothing to really dilute here. Uh, so that's fantastic to see, always a positive. And that's why I say it really is a safe swing uh, with strong fundamentals in a, in a market of chaos right now, right? So it can be a comforting opportunity for people. Uh, and then let's look at the revenues. Uh, well, you can see for the nine months ended September 30th, 2023. So for the first three quarters of 2023, they did $1.1 million in revenue. And that's not including the fourth quarter, which we're going to see you know, soon, I would think, with the annual report. So this is a company that's already doing well over a million dollars in annual revenue. 
uh, without the need of toxic financing, without the need of, of loans and, and tons of debt, which is really, really impressive to see. And it's all built on you know a, what is a fundamentally good company, which is CM Tech. So, uh, and they're in the right sector as well at the right time. So a lot to like here. And just a little more to like about PWDY, uh, the, in, the insiders, the CEO, actually did some uh, share purchases as well. You can see here from August 8th and August 9th of this year, uh, he bought a, a, about 1.5 million shares uh, at between the price of 11 and 13. So he's buying, right? He's buying shares, you know, kind of right around where we are, uh, which is a really nice confidence to see from the CEO in that regard. Here's their Twitter. You can follow them at, at Powerdyne International. Uh, but this Twitter gives some insight into the fact that um, the the annual report's going to look really good, right? Because they were talking about the, how they had the slowdown in Q2 with the supply chain issues, but they still did 1.1 million in the first nine months despite that. And then if you look at their October tweets, uh, PWDY announces CM Tech has a backlog of orders totaling almost $600,000 as of September 30th, 2023. And then October 5th, See, PWD wise, please do announce we have enough inventory and process and in stock to support all of our CM Tech backlog of orders and any additional sales that will come in. So we can see over six hundred thousand dollars in sales coming in uh, just in this last quarter, which would bring our total annual revenues up to you know around one point seven, one point eight million, maybe even more if there was additional orders from that time. So uh, with the with the ten k coming up, you know it, it should be record. A record revenue report for this company okay and additionally I do expect us to hear more updates from them soon since they are relatively active but you know they're not constantly active right they update when they have real updates so we know that they're alive we know that they're active and they are overdue for an update so I'm sure we're gonna get a PR or a tweet out at some point from them as well so that's what we have to look forward to with this company this is really a, a unique company in the OTC very little debt strong revenues and, and a actually good uh, product slash service behind it so pretty exciting stuff and if we just take a look at the chart here let me bring it up real quick for you guys And we can see the chart's really healthy. Uh, like I said, it trades super organic, right? Because there's not really any dilution. If you look at the past two years, uh, because it just got listed recently, this chart's wide open. I mean, the amount of room, uh, there's no, there's actually like literally no resistance above around that 003 area. So over 003, uh, we're in completely uncharted territory, which means there's, I mean, there's nobody that even owns shares over that price. Uh, which is pretty incredible to think about. So all we have to do is get to like three million market cap on a company that could that already has the fundamentals that justifies far more than three million dollar market cap. Uh, but yeah, I mean the chart's really unique in that way, right? Just look at that. I mean, there's there's no shares over zero zero three. There is no resistance. So it's going to be really exciting to see how it trades once it does break that zero zero three level. Uh, because the chart's just wide open. I mean, we're just going to be making new uh, new all-time highs nonstop after that. So really, really nice chart setup as well. Have to love it. Uh, everything about PWDY right now looks pretty much perfect from a swing trader's perspective, at least from my opinion, my perspective. So it's definitely an exciting play, and I look forward to hearing more updates from the company. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.